daily life. It can appeal to us pleasantly, make us feel hot or cold, gloomy or gay. It can affect our personality and mental outlook quite as definitely as a sleepless night, a cold in the head, or a good square meal. This knowledge and many, many additional facts are a part of the artist's tools as he works with color. Color. The designer, the decorator, the artist, the printer are daily learning many puzzling but interesting new facts about color. Soft blends and delicate shades are the result of the artist's use of color. Combinations that react favorably on the nerves of our eyes and on our mind. Combinations that are soothing and pleasing because they were based on a thorough knowledge of the fascinating subject of color. A happy birthday to the color box. If you're new to the channel, something that I like to do sometimes is to take ephemeral audio and video from the past and use it to help inspire new music. So I took this 1930s Chevrolet sort of infomercial that I think they were using to market their new line of car colors. So I believe this is public domain. And if it's not, I'm claiming fair use for educational purposes. The audio started something like this. Use of color, combinations that react favorably on the nerves of our eyes and on our mind. So I took that, chopped it up, sampled it, and then used the color box to record a bunch of new layers. So what we're gonna do is talk about just some of the production tricks that I used and how the color box helped make this song come together. For the bass sound, I did a little bit of EQ and a little bit of saturation. Without it, it sounds like this. But with it, so it definitely gives it some more fingernails. It can grab on a little better. I'm using half round strings. So they're a dull sounding string on a Mustang. So it's kind of a dull bass sound on its own. So I shifted the treble shift down all the way. That should be around 2K, which is a sweet spot, I think. I also boosted some low mids. So I, I used the mid shift and brought it down a little bit. Boosted there, I left the bass flat. I set the gain on like the second click. So like, one click up. You can hear it there. That's like kind of one of my favorite places in saturation for bass, like even clean bass. That grittiness is helping us grab in the song. It's easier to be heard without being as loud. And in the song, you don't notice that grit. Anytime you're mixing a song, there's always a little bit of a territorial dispute of who is actually bass dominant. When I say bass, I don't mean the instrument, I mean the frequency. You need to let the kick drum and the electric bass or the synth bass or whatever low end instrument, uh, you need to create space. You need to allow those instruments to have their own sort of zones. So I decided for this song to let the drums be the low, low dominant instrument and have the electric bass be more of a low mid dominant instrument and that gives us this sort of crispy fat bass sound and in context appeal to us pleasantly make us feel hot or cold so admittedly this is not a drastic change to the bass signal this is subtle but i think great music and great arrangements are the sum of a lot of subtle decisions which brings us to the drums and before I get any further, I have to introduce Kevin Leon, who is a wonderful drummer. Uh, he does this cool thing called Midweek Breakbeat. Go follow Kevin on Instagram. He posts like a really cool breakbeat every week, free to use if you credit him. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. But what I decided to do is run that drum signal out through the color box back in, and that gives us something that sounds like this. So without the color box, with the color box. Just a little bit of extra beef on the drums, and then I boosted uh, some of the lows. Because remember, uh, we were talking about 
allowing some space for low frequency instruments, I decided on this song to have the drums be a little more low, low frequency dominant and the bass, the electric bass, to be a little more low mid frequency dominant. They're allowing space for each other. Check this out. Here's the same parts without the color box on either. And then here's with the color box. To me, just a little more exciting, and then also just a little more like accommodating in the frequency range, like naturally they're sitting together. And again, please go follow my friend Kevin. Midweek breakbeat, some saucy drums every week. I'm a big fan, uh, so go give him a follow if you haven't already. What else? Let's talk about something kind of weird. Check this out. The Omnichord. By itself with nothing, it sounds like this. Which sounds cool, but I wanted to have a little more presence, a little more clarity. So I used the color box. I did step two on the gain, so a little bit of saturation, not too crazy, but I did a lot of EQ. I'm using the high pass uh, to pull out a lot of the lows. I'm adding some treble. I'm adding some upper mids and cutting some bass. So without the color box, but with the color box, it sounds like this. A lot more clarity, a lot more presence, and it's sitting a little more in the music where I want it to. A fun thing that you can do with the color box that you might not know, uh, there's one input, one quarter inch input or XLR input, but there's two outputs. There's a, a quarter inch output and an XLR output. So what I'm doing is I'm using the color box to split this signal. I have the XLR going straight into the interface, but I have the quarter inch going into a reverb tremolo pedal. And then I'm hard panning those signals. So I have the dry signal to one ear and I have the wet signal to the other ear. It sounds like this. And then I ran both of those through a bus with a plugin called the Crystallizer by Sound Toys, which is a really cool plugin. And that gives us something that sounds like this. <laughs> Almost like underwater Donkey Kong level or something. And in context of the music. Color, color, color. This knowledge and many, many additional facts are a part of the artist's tools. In addition to using the color box for saturation and EQ, you can use it to send multiple signals out. And borrowing that trick from Nick at JHS, who talked about. Uh, doing the same thing for acoustic guitar. So anytime you have a, a, a mono source, it can be cool to use it to create a stereo sort of image. Fun stuff. We're having fun. Music's fun. Oh, by the way, there's another thing I did to the drums earlier I didn't tell you about. So I made like a lo-fi thing. I had the same drum loop, but made two different sections. But then I did this separate section So without the reverb. Uh, sometimes when you have a song or an arrangement that's like the same chords over and over again and the same groove over and over again, it can start to get a little boring. Uh, so by doing something drastic with the EQ, you can kind of make a song feel like a, it's having a totally new section. So like check this out. In context, we went from this sort of A section to the sort of B, B section, just by removing some elements and processing the drums differently. White as definitely is a sleepless night, a cold in the head, or a good square meal. Now we're in a totally different place. This knowledge and many, many additional facts are a part of the artist's tool. It made space for the Omnichord to come out a little brighter. Color, color, color. The designer, the decorator, the artist. And the then it builds back into the previous section. Many puzzling but interesting new facts about color. So all I did was I, I pulled out like all of the treble and all of the bass. And then I boosted the mids a bunch. And then I did a filter sweep where I just kind of swept 
uh, the frequency of the mids back and forth. Of course, you could do that in your DAW by automating an EQ, but if you're only ever working in your computer, there's infinite options and you can infinitely go back and redo things or undo things. I like the idea of committing to a production decision, and I like the idea of manipulating a production decision with an actual knob or potentiometer. By the way, these feel great. The click on the step is wonderful. There's something to be said by actually taking your hand and like changing the way something sounds. By the way, speaking of really talented friends, I wanted to tell you about my friend Justin Powell, who threw some really cool trumpet on this song. <laughs> Justin's just such an awesome musician, and he has a great approach to sound. Uh, I really love hearing how using the color box just brought a lot of the breath and human quality out of the trumpet. How about this? We'll listen to the song with the non-color box trumpet in the mix versus with the color box trumpet in the mix. New facts about color box. Soft blends and delicate shades are the result of the artist's Here's our color box. New facts about color box. Soft blends and delicate shades are the reason. Not really louder, but just so much more like perceptive and present, which reminds me of the synth. So uh, the unison part that's going along with the trumpet. For the synth sound, without the color box, it sounds like this which sounds fine, but something to make it a little more interesting, using the color box with a little bit of gain, a little bit of saturation, I'm on the second step. What starts to happen is as the filter opens up on the synth, it starts to saturate when it hits the color box. So without it, it sounds like this. But with the color box, it sounds like this. So it gives the, the synth a little bit of character, a little bit of sass, just to kind of poke through part of the time. It's just another element, another layer of interest with the filter and the synthesizer interacting with the saturation in the color box. And then blending that with that breathy trumpet sounds something like this. And then with the effects. And then in context, Combinations that are soothing and pleasing because they were based on Happy birthday, Colorbox, and thank you to JHS for sponsoring this video. This is like the 10th anniversary version, which comes in like this cool gray color, uh, but all of these things hold true for the classic white version. I will post a link to this pedal, which is an affiliate link which means I would make a small commission. So that's a way that you can directly support this channel. And uh, I hope that you uh, go make some weird music that you like. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you on the next video. Like your great grandparents were watching like this commercial thinking about buying a, a Chevrolet. So I found like this thing, nice minor chord with a harp. Transit transposed it down a whole step and then back up and then I found this major chord at a different section so that's kind of our like chord progression I sampled that from the original thing and then with Kevin's funky drums and then some vibey bass All together. Color strongly influences our daily life. It can appeal to us pleasantly, make us feel hot or cold, gloomy or gay. Oh yeah, so one fun thing I did is I took the vocal part, or like the original. Quite as definitely as a sleepless night. Like the narrator, I ran that through a plugin called Little Alter Boy by Sound Toys. I love this plugin. 
it's like a um it's like a pitch shifting transposing sort of plugin so without that it sounds like this quite as definitely as a sleepless night but then with it quite as definitely as a sleepless night quite kind of kind of like a cool like old robot and then all together quite as definitely as a sleepless night and then in context of the music quite as definitely as a sleepless night quite kind of just a fun way to have like a sort of call and response sort of thing where it sounds like there's different voices coming in our personality and, and going out quite as definitely as a sleepless night a cold in the head or a so just kind of some fun production elements i'm just showing you things that i think are interesting and cool so the color box something to know about something to enjoy i hope you enjoyed this video thank you for sticking around to the end thanks for watching and hopefully i'll see you on the next video